Hello everyone, welcome back to a new Lessons with Lydia. I've not done one of these for such a long time and I'm actually really excited to sit down and get back to this. Um, I've kind of, I've not had a few weeks off totally, I've still been posting, but I've had kind of the beginning and mid of August being a little bit more chilled. It's a really good time in fashion to have a bit of a break because the rest of the months are so full on. So I thought I'd take August a little bit slower um, so I'm kind of ready to ramp it back up again and talk all things fashion and I'm so excited for this video because I feel like it will be very useful. It's something I'm kind of doing at the moment. I've been kind of implementing without even knowing it. So it's nice to break this down and I think it will be a really useful one. So the aim of this video is for you to be able to unlock the wardrobe of your dreams, of your desires, without feeling like you need to go and buy a new wardrobe. And there's a few things I've been really thinking about that um, do this without breaking the bank or making you kind of throw everything out and start again. So I'm kind of gonna break this down into sections. And the first is kind of an obvious one, but this is where we all need to start. And this is something I have been doing in a big way lately, and that is purging my wardrobe. I personally have always found a real sense of satisfaction from clearing out things. It's been something that I've done when I was little. I used to like tidy my room all the time as a, almost like a kind of obsession. It was something I enjoyed and just found so kind of cleansing. Even now, it just makes me feel so much better having a cleanse. Obviously through my job, I accumulate lots of amazing clothes and things, but there's only so much space you can actually hold in your house and it's just so nice to have a real clear out and kind of put your whole wardrobe into perspective. So what I would really advise you to do is you need time for this, you need a weekend or a few days, go through each piece, do you love it or do you not? I think it comes, it boils down to that. If you don't love something, if it's not serving you in any way, if you've not worn it for over a year, if you didn't wear it last summer and you've not worn it this summer, then it's time to give it a new home, give it a new lease of life. You can sell it on, you can donate it, you can pass it to a friend. Um, but if it's not personally serving you, then it's just taking up that space in your head and blocking you from creating what you want because you've got this thing in your wardrobe that's sitting there and you think, um, I need to wear that, but I don't love it and it just holds so much value to you, but actually what it's worth in real life is probably less than the value it is to you, if that makes sense. I think we have this thing where we cling on to the worth of clothes in our own minds. It's kind of like sentimental value almost, but it's, if it's not serving you, then it's blocking you from creating something new. So I think the thing to note here is we're moving on from things that we don't love. But what I would suggest is if you've got a lot of pieces in your wardrobe, and I think we're all guilty of this, that you love but you don't really wear, then hold on to those. If you love a piece, keep it, because that's going to kind of um, be brought into our next step. So just a couple of extra tips for when you are doing that purge. Think about what your pieces actually go with. Do you have something that you're not too sure about? Have a look in the rest of your wardrobe. See if you can make four outfits with that one piece. If you can't make a few different outfits and you don't love the piece, then it's not really worth keeping. And that's when you know uh, when to move on. Another thing I think is absolutely crucial, I'm guilty of it and it's something I am really working on and changing, is holding on to things that don't 100% fit me or feel comfortable. We've all got those pieces that we like and maybe some jeans that you think, oh, maybe if I lost a pound or two, then they'd fit me really comfortably, but that time never comes and then you're just holding on to something that doesn't really make you feel good about yourself you're not wearing it um, and it's of no use to you. So get rid of those things as well. Comfort to me is absolutely key. If you've got some shoes that don't fit, got some heels that you can't walk in, you still might like them, but they're just not serving you. You need to clear out those things to make way for those one or two special pieces that you know you can wear all the time and will actually serve you. 
Right, onto the next step now. And this is all about those pieces that you love that I mentioned that you're holding on to, but you maybe don't wear. So you need to kind of look at all of these things. Maybe put them on a rail or a separate space in your wardrobe, put them on your bed, lay them out, all of these pieces, work out do they have anything in common? So this is quite funny actually. Um, I've been talking about this recently with my mum and we've kind of spoken about this before, but basically there's many times I'm the same, she's the same. We've got things in our wardrobes that we're just not wearing. And she kind of realized one thing for her was a lot of blouses that she wasn't utilizing and wearing. Um, and she actually realized the reason she wasn't wearing any of these blouses was because they were maybe a little bit sheer and see-through. And although she loved them and really wanted to wear them, she was like, I can't because they're a little bit sheer and see-through. So the point of what I'm saying is she's identified what she loves and why she's not wearing it. So now you need to then go on to the next step, which is finding one piece or adding one piece to your wardrobe that will probably unlock all of these other pieces for you. So your blouses, for example, if you get maybe a um, skin colored top underneath, then that will probably enable you to wear a lot of sheer blouses. I have a black sheer blouse and I just wear a very slim like spaghetti strap uh, top underneath it, very fine. And it's just adding that one little basic to your wardrobe that then unlocks all of these pieces. I just changed the light a little bit. Um, I felt like I was getting a bit of a glow from this side of the room because of the window. Um, so I've just kind of taken the blind down a bit so it wasn't too glary and shiny. Um, but anyway, it's all about unlocking all of these pieces in your wardrobe. For example, she could also have gone for maybe a gilet over the top, something that you can then wear these sheer blouses with. You can see the sleeves. It keeps you a little bit warmer and you've got the gilet over the top, which keeps you a little bit more covered up. So it's those one or two pieces and suddenly she found that she could then access all of these pieces in her wardrobe that actually she's not been able to wear before. I'll give you another example and this one applies to me and it's something I need to definitely step up on. And I think the minute you kind of assess it and go over it, then it's there in your mind and you can just um, act on that. I think first thing we need to do really is, is, is sit down and think. Um, so for me, something I find that I struggle with, particularly in winter maybe, is shoes, the right kind of shoes to go with things. What am I missing from my shoe drobe and why am I not maybe wearing certain styles of trousers at certain times of years? What is it that um, I'm kind of missing and lacking? One example I've had this summer is that I found wide leg trousers are not really serving me on the days that I want to maybe not wear a sandal. I love wide leg trousers with sandals in the summer, but here in England, it's not always sandal weather. And I found that ballet flats and wide leg trousers look okay, it's not my favorite look. And I found that kind of trainers are fine, but sometimes you don't wanna wear trainers, you want a proper shoe. I think loafers sometimes are a little bit too heavy with a wide leg trouser. So it's something I've I need to buy and invest in is maybe a pointed pair of flats, something a little bit more elegant and dainty that's not a sandal, but not a rounded toe ballet flat, something that draws the eye down and that really pairs nicely with wide leg trousers because that is something I feel like I'm not getting my wear out of this season just because we can't really wear those sandals very much. So a lot of the time unlocking these unworn pieces in your wardrobe actually involves the weather. <laughs> and I know it's such a boring thing to talk about, but actually the weather really impacts the way we dress. Probably the number one thing that impacts the way we dress. Um, and I think people really neglect to think that way. We maybe see an outfit on Pinterest or Instagram that we see and we're like, we want to recreate that, but actually it doesn't really feel appropriate for where you live and the weather. And then you find you've got these pieces that maybe don't work for you with pieces that you are lacking because you've neglected the environment that you live in. As example, um, my wide leg trousers, I need to get some shoes to go with that. So really think about your weather, think about, 
these pieces that you're not wearing? Is it because they are too um, kind of cold to wear? Like for example, my mum with the blouses, um, if they are a little bit sheer, in this country it might be a little bit cold to wear, so the gilet would make real sense for her to invest in, or a fine top underneath would also make sense to invest in, and it's just by switching one little thing in your wardrobe and just adding one little thing that it really transforms um, all your other pieces. So obviously you've kind of done that step, I really think it's important to then write that down and start making a list. This applies to every time you get dressed and are struggling to get dressed. Um, and I think that's kind of the crucial thing. Make a list. It's something I've started doing and I found so, so useful. I have a section on my notes and it's called missing from my wardrobe. And basically every time I get dressed or every time I remember to do this and I'm struggling to pair my outfits together, I'll kind of have a think, what actually am I missing here? Why am I not wearing this? What is it that I need to unlock this outfit? Is it a different pair of shoes? Is it a layering piece like a cardigan to keep me a bit warmer under a blazer? What is it that is stopping me from wearing this and putting this together? Is it a belt to bring it all together? Everybody will be different in this and that's why it's so important uh, for you to go and write it down. And that's what I want this video to be about. It's not about kind of copying what I'm saying and what I'm missing. It's about then taking these tips and applying them to yourself into your wardrobe um, and writing this down and making a good list so that when you're shopping, you're not wasting money, you're not overbuying, and you're just making a really useful purchase. So my next tip when it comes to assessing your wardrobe is to work out what you wear all the time. So for example, for me, it's a black blazer. Um, I wear a lot of the same jeans at the moment, which is like a barrel leg, carrot style, cropped jean. And then once you've figured out those pieces you wear all the time, again, put them aside, put them on a rail, and then work out why you wear that all the time. What is it? about that piece that you gravitate towards. And this is kind of like the last thing I mentioned. It's probably due to the weather, your environment, your comfort, what shoes you own, and break that down. So for example, I've got some barrel leg jeans I mentioned that I wear all the time from Zara. Um, and there's a reason I've been wearing these on repeat this season. These are the reasons. So one is that the weather has not been that great in the UK, as I mentioned. So jeans are, is kind of the, that thing I'm gravitating towards a lot. The second is that I can wear them with all my different styles of jackets. I am wearing jackets in this weather. Again, it's going back to the weather. I am wearing those blazers and those jackets. So the jeans just feel like a more casual balance against maybe a blazer or something a bit smarter. But a lot of my occasions are kind of smart, casual, they're not like really, really dressy. So I need the jeans to dress down my smarter top half, which I tend to do more often. I tend to go for that smarter top half. My third is my shoes. As I mentioned, I'm not wearing loads of sandals at the moment, but I am wearing quite a lot of ballet flats and loafers. And these jeans just work really nicely with ballet flats because they're a bit of a crop. They're a kind of cool barrel leg style. And I think that kind of offsets a more feminine ballet flat. Um, so that is something I'm wearing all the time because I don't want to wear trainers. I feel like there's so many times of the year I can wear trainers and I just don't want to wear trainers at the minute. But I also can't wear sandals because it's often kind of a bit drizzly and a bit cold. So ballet flats is what I'm pairing with these jeans and my ballet flats go with these jeans. So that's why I'm wearing these jeans all the time. And another is that I can belt the jeans. Um, I often use belts to transform and create my outfits and these jeans look great belted. Another reason is that you can dress them up in the evening. I think because they've got that barrel leg, they just do have that kind of cool edge that you can then dress up. And they also go with lots of different heel types. They go with kind of sling back heels. Um, they go with like a heeled sandal. So again, it's back to shoes. They go with absolutely everything. So that's just a breakdown of my example, why I wear these jeans all the time. So you need to go into your wardrobe, find those pieces that you wear all the time and analyze why. So that then again, when it comes to shopping and kind of slowly adding and introducing new pieces to your wardrobe and creating that wardrobe 
of your dreams and that's a wearable wardrobe for you, you know what you need to go for again. I think there's sometimes a beauty in buying similar things. There's a reason we gravitate towards those similar things. It's not about buying 10 pairs of the exact same jeans, but what is it that also ticks that criteria? So for me, I know that that shape works for me. So I could do that shape in maybe a wool trouser or in a cotton, like more chinoy style, I could do that shape in a white jean. So it's not about buying the same pieces on repeat, it's about kind of curating what you need in your wardrobe and working out those pieces that just provide that everyday easy use. And finally, you need to learn from your mistakes so that you can really just concentrate on what you love and build that desired wardrobe. You're not going to get that desired wardrobe by buying those magpie pieces. I've spoken about these before. Those things that you buy in an impulse without thinking about them too much. Those things that don't go with everything. So maybe out of your purge that you're doing, analyze that. Analyze those pieces of why I don't wear this, what what went wrong with this purchase. And then again, you can make a list of this so that you don't go astray when you're building and rebuilding your wardrobe for the new season. Um, I think it's good to always reflect on the past season as well. So we're kind of coming up to autumn. Maybe you can look at photos from last year or your pieces from last year and analyze those so that going forward into the new season, you can feel like you really kind of headstrong and know where you're going with your wardrobe. So for example, for me, what I've made the mistake of getting in the past are things like um, summery weight blouses and tops that are maybe in a wintry style. Things that maybe come out in autumn, winter that look very pretty and attractive and you think, yeah, that's really nice, but actually, it's not very practical. Um, it may look wintry, but actually the weight of it probably feels a little bit summery. Then you need lots of layering and then the blouse and the top just gets lost under your layers. So that is kind of a mistake that I know I've made in the past, but there are loads of different wardrobe mistakes we make and it's all about just breaking that down and analyzing it. So that's kind of my final tip. And I think the key thing to take away from this is just to take some time to analyze everything in your wardrobe so that you're not wasting time and money further down the line. It may take a little bit of effort to do this and a little bit of remembering, but actually in the long run, it will stand you in so much good stead. I think at this time of the year, it's kind of mid to end of August. It's one of those times it's still summer and I still think September's kind of summery as well. I know in a lot of places you live that it's warm. So it's a really good time actually to not maybe invest in loads. I'm not shopping loads. I'm, I've got new bits here and there, but I'm not doing lots of shopping. Um, I think it's a good time just to take that step back and do this analysis um, so that you feel very fresh and cleansed and just ready really to create that wardrobe that you feel like you should have and that you deserve and that you desire really. And hopefully these steps will create that for you. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, hit that subscribe if you enjoyed my videos. Let me know if you want to see more of these lessons with Lydia um, where I kind of break down and analyze things. Um, I know these often go down quite well, so hopefully you will have enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, hit subscribe the new season is coming and I'm so excited to share lots of new content with you and the same over on Instagram and TikTok too um, both at Lydia Jane Tomlinson I'll link them below thank you so much and I'll see you in my next one